but I've got these boxes back here. In fact, um, I painted this one, I forget how long ago, at least a year or two, and it has um, a Dixie Belle Mylar stencil, and you can see it here. I did that on both sides. I also used a stencil uh, on the side, but this is a nice, quick, easy project to upscale what is rather somewhat of a, a rather tired old box. So I, I've had this one around. I thought it was nice, good time to bring it into the studio and paint it. And we've got a few Dixie Bell products. Sorry, I just moved my camera around. And in fact, um, I just, I was moving some products around and you can still get these transfers on Dixie Bell's website. I think it's $10, which is a good deal. I think it's on closeout. But if you love transfers or sunflowers, you might want to go get you a few. But these are, I'm going to call these the old school transfers, meaning they're coming, coming out with more sheets and different things. But I thought, man, this would be kind of cool to use in my projects, geeking out in sunflowers. So also have a, a fairly new one, but this is the Crazy Daisy. I've not used this one yet. I thought that would be fun. And then I also have this one I've used on a live back when Teresa Lee and I were live on the Crazy Brush Show. I use this one, it's the Bee's Knees. And what I really liked, it does have the one sunflower in there. And I might bust out the, the bees, which is really cool. I'm not sure that I'm gonna use the honeycomb, but we just got it all out. So everything's sunflower tonight. And uh, I think that would be fun just to see what we create. I don't really have a plan other than, okay, I guess I do have a plan. I got my products. We have Rebel Yellow, Colonel Mustard, and Daisy, just a bunch of yellows. And then I grab chocolate as kind of a darkening, maybe if we get the mood of aging and giving some character, I have chocolate on standby. On um, this one here, let me just bring this closer since we have it. There's the side that was using the Mylar stencil. I did not uh, paint the inside because I'm, I was using it for storage and I also did not paint the bottom. So I think that worked out. I, I've been keeping it on its, um, like this. I had paint and organization stuff. So, you know, paint as much or a little or that you would like to paint. I think I might go with the same vibe, meaning don't paint the inside, don't paint the bottom and see how it goes. I'm gonna use my butcher pan tray because my yellow has seen better days. Usually like in normal, I'm going to start darker and work lighter and we'll use more of a dry brush approach with this. Keep it rugged. There's so much character on this, I hate to lose it, and that dry brush kind of technique helps bring that out. I've misted this, my brush, and I missed this paint a little bit. I don't want it super wet, but you know, I just want it to be able to move it around. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some colors. So I'm gonna keep things fairly, um, I'm gonna duplicate some more of the same technique I did back there. I, I'm pretty sure I did a live on the other one, I just don't know when I did that. So notice uh, that I did not do anything like boss on this. Uh, I'm not really worried about things like <clears throat> bleed through and you know bonding. I'm, I want, if I did any boss, I would do clear on this um, just because I don't want any a white or gray showing. So rarely do I not use a boss, but in this one, it's more of an uh, home decor situation. I'm not too worried about. <clears throat> I'm not expecting this color to be a primarily heavily seen color. And I already can tell that I'm gonna need more paint. I use a large brush. That way you can <clears throat> work quickly. You just wanna get it on there. I want the wood grain to add texture the thinner your paint is the more transparent it's going to be so try not to thin down that paint too much and apply as much as this as you want you might find in some areas you go heavy some you go light all right i think the secret to things that look more authentic is don't be so um Precise. When I say authentic, the word I really mean is um, we're doing a faux finish and I want this to look like it's gone through years of use. And um, 
obviously it would have been worn out pretty good. <laughs> Let me invite you all to, if you haven't, to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just about every live I do gets cleaned up, polished up, and put over there. It's a great library. Uh, of course, if you're not a big fan of YouTube, you can always go to the video tab on my page here and look at all the videos from the beginning of my lives, really. I would guess that I've been doing lives for, I don't know, over five years at least. Work quickly. It's going to feel more, more, more fun, right? Don't take you all day to paint it and go different directions if you want. But right now I'm going with like the idea that the boards were maybe painted before they were put on. I love that you can get to these nails. I have no idea where I get these boxes from, but state sales probably. Don't see them around very often, but I've got some around the house that have more old lettering on it. I'll, I'll not paint those, but these are blank canvases. Anything that inspires you to keep it around a while. Hey, we got it all done. I got all that paint out and didn't need it. We'll use it later. I think I'm gonna do this one edge right here, just to kind of keep the fronts looking the same. All right, very good. Now, usually at that point, I'm going to just not change brushes because I don't have a lot of paint on my brush right now. Let's switch to the next lightest color. So we're working dark to light. This is Daisy. So here, we're gonna come in with a second color and just dry brush it. Really don't want much water on his. In fact, let me spin this around because that side's still kind of wet. We'll start at the beginning where it's starting to dry a little bit. And if you need to work quicker, just get a blow dryer heat gun out. Same principle, you're just working lighter to dark, dark to light. And you might use less of the second color than the first. It really is up to you. You can see how it's just kind of random. But we want a great casual palette for our canvas here. And when I say canvas, the wood's the canvas, but the, the star is gonna be all the stencils. And I'd like to see if the transfer I got something in the transfer, I think it would work well. You can see when I'm not, when it's wet because it smears rather than um, dragging. So I'll try and keep an eye on the wet part. I just don't enjoy doing um, my heat gun when I, if I can avoid it. So that's a cool vibe, right? And even the brown coming through is nice. It acts as a, thir as a third color. All right, let's just make sure. See, it's a little wet down there. Let's just give this a quick blast. Look at that. Love all that texture of the wood coming through. It feels like a giant sunflower with these colors. It's great. So I'm using the mini brush right now. And notice how I'm not putting much paint on my brush. A lot of this, it's very, and I'll flatten it out and then drag it. I'm not painting into the wood, I'm dragging across the wood. Oh, that's great. Okay, so that's our second color. From dark to light, that's the plan. Um, we're gonna go to the final light color and that's Rebel Yellow. This one I can actually dip my brush in there. I'm not too worried about contamination really. We're gonna go in there, you can almost even see the three colors on my brush. All right, put the butcher plan to the side. We're gonna spin this around back to the beginning so you can just touch it. It's already kind of dry, it's great. Let's not put so much of this one. Let's just kind of hit some of the edges. The reason I say that is because I think I would like to use this color a little bit more with the stencil. So we're just gonna, again, just kind of drag it very light I think I've mentioned this before in some of my demonstrations is every color you use less of it. And so we're just gonna hit some of these colors. This is more of an accent, okay? So I don't wanna use it a lot. So you can see I'm kind of moving. Normally I have my Lazy Susan, but I have a 
client's nightstands on my Lazy Susan, so tonight we're spinning manually. Okay, there we go, that's working. So just barely touching the paint into brush. What do y'all think of this? Y'all tried this kind of technique before? Remember we still have the color chocolate that we can pull out and use. So yeah, just little bits here and there. It's okay if you're light, heavy handed in one area, not another. We just want to add that color a little bit. Let's keep that color handy. I'm going to put this brush in the, my bucket of water. So the first thing I want to feature is the Crazy Daisy. This is a nice large transfer or stencil. And I will say that a lot of times, let me show you and find it. I've talked a lot about the Dixie Bell round small transfer. It's one of my go-tos. But when you're dealing with a large sheet like this, you can imagine how long it would take to stencil. So I'm gonna to try tonight, for the sake of demonstration, the blue sponge. Probably any sponge, but this one is a nice flat. And um, the disadvantage here is that, this is where I need to put my, some paint on the tray, is I can't really put, if it was a clean bottle, maybe I'd get it in there. But let's go ahead and put some paint down on the tray so we have something to work with. Always trying to keep a wet rag around. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this paint around because that's a lot of paint. I'll just keep this round small handy. And uh, I don't use this technique a lot, but because it is larger, I wanna demonstrate with you live how that might work. Notice there's a one inch, like a one inch thing here. I don't wanna have a gap. So we actually need to hang this off the edge and maybe do something like that. Now you could tape this down. I, I know some might spray mount the back and stick it on there, but I think I'm just gonna do my best just to hold it still. All right, so I'm just gonna tap my um, blue sponge into the paint and try and load that up so it has a pretty, and I may have to put more paint down, nice consistent uh, load of paint. I don't need this to be a heavily prominent. My table's squeaking. So I just want this to be a little bit more. I didn't put the paint down. I thought I had plenty of paint. You see how I'm just pushing in through the stencil? I don't need this to be um, super thorough. What is the word? Saturated? A more of a hint to the sunflower. I'm holding my thumb down really pretty hard. All right, so off to the side, you can kind of see me swirling that around. And the sponge should give you the opportunity to almost even dab some of the heavy areas and move that paint around. Now you can see how this is lifting up. This is where spray mount might help a little bit. Some like removable spray mount. Don't sp spray mount your stencil to your piece, but. Uh, but I thought this was really great to cover up the entire end. Now remember, we did a lot of work to put all those layers down. So we are covering some of that up, but it should still show through. So that's, really looking great and this once this dries one of the next things I would suggest you do is do a light sand on it so it's a little bit more um, again I'm going to use that word authentic and less clean and sharp unless you want it to be more of a crisper feel all right so I think that worked out pretty well again I held held on for dear life if you've got another way you like to do it Put in the comments. Let others know what some good tips you have for these larger stencils. <clears throat> All 
All right, so that's really what I'm looking for. I wanted a hint of the sunflower, and I think that worked out really well. Let's fade a little bit of that. I'm trying to figure out best way of holding this again. We'll do that right there. So what I'm gonna do now is just fade this stencil into the side. What I mean by that, just kind of vignette it out as kind of bringing the eye to the side. I'm just looking for texture, layers, something like that. Just a little bit of a ode to the side. Paint you have on your sponge. See, I just like how that fades out. I don't know, I just think it's kind of cool. But you have another stencil. So this is from the Bees Knees transfer or stencil set. Let's go to our oval small brush and let's switch and let's do the daisy color. And I think on this one, we'll kind of counter that side by putting something over here. So I'm gonna use a smaller smaller brush, but we are using a darker color. I'm My goal here is to not be perfect. So anything you can do, like don't fill the entire stencil in, just do parts of it. It'll feel more, more authentic. And maybe what we can do here is stagger another one down below. I tell you what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go in with the first color. What color is that? Colonel Mustard. And let's do a dark one down here. There's no, it's not a wrong and right, it's just what goes well with your piece. And it's okay if my colors are mixing on my brush. Now the other thing you could do is you could also do lighter on the outside and darker on the inside. That would be kind of a cool vibe. Let's do that again. Back to our daisy. <clears throat> And mix it up a little bit. Maybe let's go a little bit halfway down this time. This is Daisy. All right. So there's one. And then let's do the other one again. Maybe this one will go high just to mix up the variety a little bit. Let me pin this thing down and we'll go back to Colonel Mustard. Just get some sunflower. That's that's my goal. Just mix it up a little bit. If you really want them to pop, then go to your uh, brighter color, which I was using Rebel Yellow, and really make it stand out. But I wanted it to be subtle, and I think that works really well. So the sides pop, and then we've got some flower. So Everything sunflowers. All right, we have these bees, and I think it'd be kind of sad if we didn't use the bee somehow. So let's um, let's go in there with our kernel mustard. Actually, you know what? This would be kind of cool to use our chocolate with. Maybe we'll just put a little bee up here. Now, if you really need to fill this in, you could swirl it or pounce a little bit more. I'm kind of creating a new color with all the colors on my brush right now. There we go. Which is kind of nice because instead of a dark chocolate bee, we kind of got a light one. And then maybe over here, I'll use the small bee just to add the variety again. Back into the chocolate. We'll put this guy down below. Clipping his wing a little bit. Really, whatever brush that gives you the best pouncing ability. And notice pouncing is the word, not dragging. I'm not dragging, because then if you drag, you're just gonna put paint. I think that looks cute. It's coming together. And we'll just cut that out. There's a lot of variety in this set, so if you like, transfer, especially sunflowers. You'll love this one. 
There are different styles of sunflowers, like from different collections. So, all right, so let me use a transfer stick. And usually my rule of thumb is give it a good solid rub of the whole area one time and then start seeing how much will release and then just add some more rub if you need it. Let me see if I can bring it out a little bit closer. All right. Okay, what I mean by that, so now that we've rubbed it one time, we're going to just start slowly seeing if it's gonna stick. And if it doesn't, just start rubbing again. Remembering that my surface is not smooth, okay? Keep in mind, this is not smooth. So this is not an ideal condition, but it will stick. I mean, if you can stick these things to canvas and other things, it'll stick. <clears throat> now, you might, because a transfer could get rubbed off from the standpoint of over time, this might be something you might want to top coat or protect some way. The jury's out if I'm gonna do that or not. Almost had it. Here we go. She's on. <clears throat> it's on. Okay, so this is the Dixie Bells sanding sponge. Um, you might do a little bit of a quick burnish with your hand, make sure nothing's floating off or not stuck. And then you can come back if you want. And this will give it a little bit of a rustic feel. Be careful because if you want something clean and classy and fresh, this is gonna knock that off. I just think that's a cool backdrop with the sunflowers in the background. And the cool thing is, at least with this set, you can always just roll up the rest and stick it back in the container and use it for another project. All right, we'll do one more and then we'll see how it all came together. Off. All right, rub it on real quick. Make sure it's all down. Give it a light sand. And this part is optional, of course, but I think that'll help. So here we go, finished project. So we have two transfer sets are two stencil sets and a transfer. And I think that came out really well. Lots of variety and little surprises that came along with this project and hopefully helps showcase some of our cool products that Dixie Bell has. Of course, if you ever had any questions, let me know. Let me know you're watching later on or have any comments, but hope you like that. And uh, I enjoy doing that with you. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.